Hello everyone, you are live with Marie. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to your girl. If you are back, hello and welcome. So in this podcast, I am giving advice for families, friends, neighbors, and for those who need to listen and need advice. Um, it could be really worrying when someone you care about is being hurt or abused by their partner so i will be helping giving advice in supporting females and male victims of abuse because even males go through it um so what i'm gonna start with is what do you do that it's important um you can help make a great difference to someone who is abused um your response to his or her situation is really always important if they feel supported or encouraged they may feel stronger and more able to make decisions if they feel judged or criticized they could be afraid to tell anyone else about the abuse again abuse in any relationship is quite common and is mainly committed by men against women much of this abuse is witnessed by children as well some women are abusive in relationships Women in lesbian relationships and men in gay relationships can also be abusive to their partners. This is someone that said a little story script. My best friend really helped me. She never judged me or made me feel like it was my fault. She helped me think about what to do, look after my kids to give me a break, and was there when I needed her. It can have been easy on her, but her support made a big difference. A lot of people is always asking questions of what is abuse anyways in a relationship. So here it goes. Every couple has arguments or disagreements. It's reality and it's real. Things happen. In a respectful and equal relationship, both partners feel free to state their opinions, to make their own decisions to be themselves, and to say no to sex. But this is not the case when someone is abusive in an abusive relationship one partner tries to dominate the other through physical harm criticisms demands threats or sexual pressure for the victim and her children this behavior can be very dangerous frightening confusing and damaging mentally it could be psychological or emotional abuse can be just as harmful as physical abuse Abuse in a relationship is never acceptable, regardless of any circumstances, and is never the fault of the victim. Abuse is not caused by alcohol, or stress, or by the victim's behavior. Abuse happens when the abuser wants to control and manipulate the other person. Physical and sexual assault, threats, and stalking are crimes and can be reported to the police. This is another story of someone else. My family and friends didn't think it was that bad because he only physically hit me just once. But the put downs and manipulation were so much worse. The way he controlled my life, I really wish my family could have understood how horrible it was. How can you recognize somebody is actually being abused? Someone that you know. You might be unsure if your friend or relative is experiencing any type of abuse. Maybe you just have some sense that something is wrong in her relationship. Sometimes there are signs that indicate that they are in an abusive relationship, but often there will be nothing obvious. Here's a, here are some signs that I could actually give you, especially from experience. So signs that someone is being abused They seem afraid of their partner or is always very anxious to please him or her. They have stopped seeing their friends or family or cuts phone conversations short when their partner is around. Their partner often criticizes them and humiliates them in front of other people and family. She says her partner pressure or forces her to do sexual things when she doesn't want to. Her partner often orders her about or make all the decisions. For example, her partner controls all the money, tells her who she could see and what she could do. 
She often talks about her partner's jealousy, bad temper, or possession. She has become anxious or depressed, has lost her confidence, or is unusually quiet all the time around people. She has physical injuries, bruises, broken bones, sprains, cuts, etc. She may give unlikely explanations for physical injuries. Her children seem afraid of her partner, have behavior problems, or are very withdrawn or anxious. She is reluctant to leave her children with her partner. She doesn't trust him at all. After she has left the relationship, her partner is constantly calling her, harassing her, following her, coming to her house, or waiting outside for her. That's scary. This is why they give restraining orders. If you feel that you just broke up with the person and the person is not bothered, you know, leaving you alone and he or she keeps coming around unexpected and you keep telling them 20,000 times to leave me alone, do not come around and they keep threatening you, please go to the police, make a report, go to court and get that restraining order because these people will never leave you alone. Why doesn't she just leave? That is the biggest question everybody's always asking us women that was actually in a situation like this. It's not as easy for everybody else and how they put it into their mind or perspective when they're not in the situation. So, why doesn't she just leave? This is the main question everybody asks. It could be hard to understand why someone would stay in a relationship if she is being treated so badly. Leaving may appear to be a simple solution. You might think that the abuse is partly her fault because she puts up with it or that she is just weak or stupid if she stays. It is hard to imagine that what it is like to be abused when you are not in a situation yourself. From the outside, it may seem easier to leave than it usually is. It can be very difficult to leave an abusive relationship. This is an important thing for friends and family to really understand. Um, These are the reasons why it may be so hard for an individual to leave a situation like this. They might be afraid of what the abuser will do if they leave. The person who is abusive may have threatened to harm them, their relatives, or their children, pets, or property. They may threaten to even commit suicide if they talk about leaving. Many victims find the abusive and abuse continue or get worse after they leave. I don't care. Go ahead and hurt yourself. You ain't hurting me no more. <laughs> That's what I say. But let's keep going. Um, they still love their partner because he or she is not abusive all the time. Um, they have commitment to the relationship or belief that marriage is forever, for better or for worse. Mm, lies. Um, they hope their partner will change. Sometimes the abusive person might promise to change. They might think that if the abuser stops drinking, the abuse will stop. This is one thing I gotta tell to all my ladies and gentlemen, no matter what age or gender you are. Um, they never change. Even when you go ahead and tell them, you know what, you need help, I'm willing to go to therapy with you, etc. Um, I went through it myself, and it's not fun. It's not something that you have to have a positive outlook in it. You can't go ahead and think positive and say, oh yeah, you know, he said he will be able to change. They never change, they never will change. So all you have to do is really let them go let them go let's just keep on um they think the abuse is their fault always remember and remind yourself it's never your fault it's never your fault these people are just sick in the head that to me they don't deserve love they don't deserve love um they can't not be loved they don't even love themselves it's their own insecurities that they come and they take it out on you Let's just keep on. She feels or he feels they should stay for the sake of their children and that it is best that children live with both parents. Their partners may have threatened to take or harm the children. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it could be a lack of confidence. The person who is abusive will have tried to break down their partner's confidence and make her feel like she is stupid, hopeless, and responsible for the abuse. They may feel powerless and unable to make their own decisions. Isolation and loneliness. The person who is abusive may have tried to cut her off from contact with family or friends. She might be afraid of coping on her own. If English is not her first language, she might feel particularly isolated. Hmm. Pressure to stay from family, her community, or church. She might fear rejection from her community or family if she leaves. She may feel, or he, that they can't get away from their partner because they live in a rural area or because they have the same friends or are part of the same religious community. This is actually for people that's religious and, you know, always in church. She doesn't have the same means to survive if the relationship ends she might not have anywhere to live or have access to money on her own or transportation particularly if she lives in an isolated area they may be dependent upon her, their partner's income if she has a disability she may depend upon uh, abusers or abuser for assistance Always remember, it is very important that you do not make them feel that there is something wrong with them because they haven't left. This will only reinforce her low confidence and feelings on guilt and self-blame. Leaving an abusive partner may sometimes be quite dangerous. The abuse may continue or increase after she leaves or he leaves. Help them weigh up their feelings to decide what they could do and to consider their safety, whether they decide to stay or to leave. They may want to contact a service to talk about how to protect themselves. This is another story somebody told us. When I told her how he abused me, my friend said, but you let him do it like it was my fault. That made me feel worse. She didn't know how much pressure He put on me to go back. How he said he loved me and will kill himself rather than live without me and the children. He made me feel so guilty. I thought how important it was for the children to have a father. It was all the way of manipulating me to come back. My friend stopped talking to me after I went back to him. She said I was stupid. I was really upset because she was my close friend in Australia. And I really needed someone to talk to and help me to see the way he treated me was wrong. Wow. So the friend was mad at her because she didn't want to leave. She was thinking about her kids. But us women, every woman, if you have children with an abusive partner, you always have to remember you have to put your children first. I understand they say, oh, a child needs their father. Okay, but a child does not need a father when they really abusive physically and verbally because that does affect the child so for you to protect yourself and your children it's better off to leave that is not being a father i'm sorry that is not being a father figure they have to show how to respect a woman and love a woman so when they grow up they know how to be self-loved and love the right way If they see this all the time in a household, they're going to think that it's okay to treat a person the same way their father treated the woman, which is their mom, or it's okay for people to treat them like that. No, this is not good. Not good at all. So all I could say is get your kids out of that situation while you can. Um, They literally have numbers for you to call. They have safe horizons that women could call and they treat you very well. They treat you different. And like I said, they they help you. They help you with certain situations, whether you need housing, assistance, with money, or if you have a disability. They they look into everything that you need in certain 
stuff that they actually have to offer they give you so never think that oh my god i don't have no place to go i don't have nobody to reach to reach to your safe horizon and trust me they will help you all the way they will protect you and your children especially when you have children involved they take matters serious so this is somebody else's story my family knew i was being abused and that i felt trapped but they didn't say anything about it until I finally left. It would have helped if they had said that his behavior wasn't okay because I thought it was normal. If they had said that I was a good person and that they were there for me if I needed them, it would have made me getting out a lot easier in this situation. Um, how do you approach the person? Approach your friend or relatives in a sensitive way, letting them know you are concerned. You have concerns about them. For example, I'm worried about you because I've noticed you seem really unhappy lately. Never be surprised if they seem defensive or rejects your support. They might be scared or worrying you if they tell you about the abuse. They may not be ready to admit to being abused or may feel ashamed or afraid of talking about it. They might have difficulty trusting anyone after being abused. If the victim is a man, he may feel particularly embarrassed about speaking about the abuse as he may have seen or been weak or unmanly. So when a man goes through an abuse by a woman, they feel like, oh my God, you up, you know what? You a vagina, you letting her have control of you and etc even if you're gay or not even women abuse men so you know for them to feel like i don't feel like a man because you know i'm the one suffering the abuse that's why i always say it goes for men and women so never judge don't push the person into talking if they are feeling uncomfortable and never talk to a victim next to their abuser that's what people mess up on they want to be asking questions on oh how you been is everything okay at home but the person's right next to their abuser of course they can't open up the way they want to make sure you take a walk make believe you gotta throw out the trash and just talk outside make sure it's only one-on-one -on -one, not everybody around especially the damn abuser Never push the person to talk if they feel they really uncomfortable in the environment they're in. But let them know that you're there if they need to talk. Be patient and keep an ear out for anything that indicates they are ready to talk about the abuse. The most important thing you could do is to listen without judging, respect their decisions, and help them find ways to become stronger and safer. You don't have to fully understand to be of assistance all you have to do is give your time and love without being judgmental listen to what they have to say believe what they tell you it will have taken a lot of them to talk to you people are much more likely to cover up or downplay the abuse rather than to make it up or exaggerate you might find it hard to imagine someone you know could behave so abusively but the person who is abusive will probably show you a different side to the side of the victim sees. Take the abuse seriously. Abuse can be damaging both physically and emotionally. Don't underestimate the danger they may be in. Help them recognize the abuse and understand how it may be affecting them or their own children or their surroundings. Tell them you think they have been brave in being able to talk about the abuse and in being able to keep going despite the, the abuse they're going through. Help build their confidence back up. Help understand that the abuse is not their fault, fault and that no one deserves to be abused, no matter what they do. Let them know you think that the way her partner is treating them or him is wrong. For example, no one, not even your husband, has the right to mistreat you or force you into things. Help them protect themselves. You could say, I'm afraid of what he could do to you or the children 
or I'm worried that it will get a lot worse. Talk to them about how you think they could protect themselves. Respect their decisions, even if you don't agree with them. Respect their cultural or religious values and beliefs if they are religious couples or person. Maintain some level of regular contact with them. Having an opportunity to take regularly to a supportive friend or relatives can be very important. Talk about the self-service available, which I was telling you about the Safe Horizon. Remind them that if they call a service, they can get the support and information they need. They won't pressure them to feel that they have to leave if they don't want to. Keep supporting them. The period of separation could be a dangerous time for them as the abuse may increase. They may need practical support and encouragement to help them establish a new life and recover from the abuse. They could also seek counseling or join a support group. What would really have helped is to have a relative or a friend to mind the kids for a while. I just needed the time to think and work out my feelings without the kids being around all the time. This was another story a girl said. These are some ideas. Um, it might be important that you could only say what you believe, but you used your own words. The way he treats you is wrong. What can I do to help you? How do you think is his behavior has affected you? How do you think his or her behavior is affecting your children? I'm worried about what he or she could do to you or your children. What do you think you should do? What are you afraid of if you leave? What are... Why are you afraid if you stay? Make sure you never blame them for the abuse. Don't keep trying to work out the reasons for the abuse. Don't be critical. Don't criticize them. Don't give bad advice. And don't pressure them to leave or make a decision they don't want to do. I always say, um, I always seen people that try to help me in certain situations. But all I could say and give the advice is... Call their relatives or somebody that cares or just call police. Never put yourself in between a situation that you don't want to be in. Because I noticed that if they're abusive to their partner, they could be abusive towards you. And they probably black out and not give a two shits who you are. And it could affect you. So I feel like even though you want to go ahead and approach the person and try to protect your friend or relative um i suggest just call the cops do not intervene directly because most of these people literally black out and doesn't care who you are what's in their way these people are monsters monsters the same way our narcissist is a narcissist is like a freaking jackal and hide and i had the worst experience ever the worst experience the person that I trusted with all my heart and loved turned out to be the whole opposite. I thought I finally found love and I was in love and I was gonna have such a big family and be happy. I thought wrong. What I thought I had an angel, I ended up with the devil and it's scary. It's scary that you open up to somebody that you basically put your heart in their hands and they just crushed it mentally physically verbally and they just didn't care so all i can say is if you know anybody that's in a situation of being abused even if it's virtually in front of you you already know that the abuse indoors is physically like i said just make sure you take a walk with the individual you text them from time to time, but don't text too much because sometimes even the abuser has control of text messages. But you could go ahead and try to go around the bush and be like, hey, would you like to do your nails with me? Um, I'm going to the park with the kids. You want to go to the park with the kids? And once you sit on that bleacher, just don't go like too personal, but... Ask them questions. Ask them if they're okay. Is there anything that they need to say? Is there any help out there that you could give them? And if they don't open up, then, you know, at least you're trying. 
it shows them that you care. And never force a person and give the advice, oh, but you could leave. Sometimes it does get worse. I know it got worse for me, but um, I'm here, I'm here, and I'm talking right now towards you, and I'm giving advice, and if I'm a survivor, you could be a survivor too. And never be afraid to call 411, ask them about Safe Horizon domestic violence, and they will give you the right information and the proper help for you and your kids. So I thank you all for listening. If if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to my Apple podcast so you can stay tuned. And if, like I said in the beginning, if you have YouTube, it's live with Marie and you will see my podcast there and extra videos I have available for you. So much love. God bless. Stay safe. Bye, guys.